Taking utmost responsibility about the Internet of Things should be the watchword for everyone as the impact of your activities on the cyberspace can be felt on the lives, economy and international reputation of a nation. Now, how do we navigate the space? My guest should help out and I believe he's set on this half hour move on the superhighway. Welcome to the program on the spot. My name is Blessing Abu. For his first and uh, master's degree in law and criminal justice, my guest obtained that from the prestigious Hamadou Bele University in 1985 and uh, 2013, respectively. He also obtained a master's degree in international relations and strate uh, strategic studies from Lagos State University in 2002. But before then, an advanced diploma in criminal justice administration from the University of Lagos. That, uh, in 1997. He joined the Nigeria Police Force as a cadet uh, ASP in 1990 and did his training in Police Academy in Kaduna where he moved uh, his way through the ranks before rising to the position of Director Inspector General of Police uh, Special Task Force on Terrorism and Heinous Crimes in 2016. He has attended a series of courses, seminars and workshops both within and outside Nigeria and it belongs to many professional bodies including international Association of Chiefs of Police, as well as uh, Small Arms Trafficking Course, which he obtained from uh, Budapest in, at in Hungary 2010. In 2019, he became the Commissioner of Police, Interpol, and Head of National Central Bureau, NCB. On the spot today, let's welcome Commissioner of Police, Garba Baba Omar. Thank Not you, Blessing. Thank you. Yes, when people hear of Interpol, they just imagine some big, high time police chief moving across the borders trying to track down crimes and other forms of activities. Just share with us what Interpol does mainly. Well, um, uh, Interpol, as the name implies, defi is defined as um, uh, oh, uh, it's a criminal, uh, international criminal police organization that deals in uh, getting intels, intelligence on crime and criminality all over the world and um, I share among the law enforcement agencies all over the world. Uh, the Interpol has 194 member countries. Uh, it's the largest, bigger than the United Nations, mm. and it's a global police that um, uh, has uh, 18 databases on crime, criminal, uh, all over the world. And uh, whatever examples such as uh, human trafficking, cyber crime, Mm. money laundering, financial crimes, and so on and so forth. Mm. So Interpol has also uh, dealing with uh, other related international organizations that uh, must seek help in terms of crime and criminality. So how easy has this been for you since your same office? I know your predecessors could have taken on one form of activity or the other, enveloping all these areas you've listed. And um, for us, it's one story about one Nigerian in one part of the world giving us a bad name in terms of different activities. But then it's not just on one side. If there is no patronage, there wouldn't be any soliciting. Is that what people say? So how have you been able to stand in to handle some of those cases coming before uh you? Um, uh, let me just take you a little bit back about um, uh, issues that relate to identification of criminals. You remember just of recent, about a couple of months back, the American government uh, sanctions Nigeria on visa restriction. You are quite aware of it. Yes. Now the problem has to do with the identity of criminals, especially terrorists. They operate at will, and without information about, uh, without their biometrics recorded and uploaded, there is no way in which other countries will fight this menace of terrorism. It is, it is in this uh, line that the Interpol gave the Nigerian Immigration Services a platform in which they can upload all stolen and lost traveling documents. Okay. If you apply for a passport where your biometrics is taken, 
and um, the passport is stolen f by one criminal or the other or if you have committed an offense through the upload we get onto you now you talk about um, our criminals mm -hmm. let's go back to the cyber crime during this uh, pandemic period the covid of a thing criminals devise ways in which they can cheat let me put it in that or commit crime by way of hacking into the system or the accounts of not only individual including financial institutions as well as government institutions mm. the essence is for them to that is what we call phishing hacking into the account uh, either your account either your facebook or other through that they got information in which they can transfer funds or siphon your money and transfer into another account this is what we are doing now and um, uh, we, we the interpol on our own part the central bureau mm. if there is a complaint like that law enforcement agencies they don't have the tools they don't have the avenue of doing that without passing through the interpol interpol uh, tools uh, you know we have the tools that we can detect because all info all interest all biometrics you have them at the database of the interpol okay I, i'm going to latch on to that aspect of people's biometrics we have different organization agencies seeking people to give the information and these are uploaded into whichever um, program that is listed there. But really, how safe are some of this collection of biometrics that we have such that even people will not fall prey to some of uh, our brethren, <laughs> let me use the word, yeah. who have uh, gotten technology savvy in one way or the other? and uh, to at least to avoid the criminal tendencies you see like the NIMC, they have all the biometrics they have for over 40 million biometrics of nigerians almost 25 percent of nigerians where it is recorded now if you commit an offense because interpol has to do with a criminal matter any criminal act that was recorded through the biometrics of that individuals which has been uploaded we will be able to determine the whereabout the position of that individual on what he has done which all these amounts to the situation whereby we can upload and give to the law enforcement agencies mm. when they are carrying out investigation now the safety of those biometrics you are talking about of an individual the greatest encrypted safest global network is the platform of interpol you cannot hack into the system you cannot get there is no way every day over 100,000 criminals attempt to go into the database of interpol they have never succeeded is the safest encrypted database and that is why for every organization all over the world they rely on the criminal information intelligence from well, interpol from to from function interpol yes okay so how does this work the connection for one and you said in 194 countries that's yeah. that's that's it as the information how helpful should that be for the home country of this individual's uh, yeah connection? Um, um we have just extended our platform to nigerian immigration service to the nfiu Nigeria Financial okay, Intelligence okay. Unit mm. to the Navy because of the maritime crime. Sure. You are quite aware of the pirates, mm -hmm. the kidnapping, and so on. Seriously. It is the tools of the Interpol that was used to nip in the board. Okay. You have not heard of recent kidnapping at the high sea. Reason is because the not Navy. Too, maybe not too much out in the public not, not space. Not much, not much. Mm. But now because of the COVID 19. Mm. But whatever it is, we are doing everything humanly possible with the navy to ensure safest sea hmm. all those that are coming in vessels that are coming in uploading and so on they are well protected now hmm. now the issue of cyber crime hmm. is of concern you remember last um, uh, two weeks back the 
UAE, United Arab Emirates, sure. carried out a special operation in which uh, Mr. Hush Poppy, in inverted comma, mm. were coupled alongside others were. It was a joint war with the Interpol. Okay. We supplied them with the intelligence. And all those associates of Hush Poppy that are in Nigeria were after them. In fact, there is, in the Interpol, there are certain notices. Okay. We call them other blue notice when somebody is being looked for or red notices when you are being wanted internationally when there is a warrant on you. Yeah. So the blue notice is when you're being looked for. Yes. Yeah. The red one, no, okay. The, High the, alert. The, the red notice is that there is a warrant of arrest issued by a particular country or an organization that wherever you are, anywhere in the world, especially if you are within the 194 countries anywhere you enter you can be arrested okay and you will be the process of extradition will be carried out and that is how it was so even this issue of cyber crime that is we are talking about we have succeeded in giving efcc intelligence information nfiu and other security agents even the local police in nigeria okay. they rely on the interpol like um, uh, let me take example again. Stolen vehicles. Okay. Nigerians are not aware that once your vehicle is stolen, there is need for you to make a report at the police station. The police station will send the particulars of this vehicle that was stolen. It will be uploaded into the database of the Interpol. Okay. And it will be shared immediately, seamless, among the 194 countries. Which means for every vehicle that is stolen, the chassis number, all the particulars of that vehicle, the color and whatever, is being entered into the database. Okay. Once it is entered, anywhere they have taken that vehicle, it could be retrieve it can be recovered and then extradited what, back what, to what Nigeria. What if uh, it's something that they will have pieces the parts uh, for, for, for even them? if the parts are pieces for every part of a vehicle it has a number okay and that is why we come in here issue of forensic analysis of a vehicle let me give you an example mm -hmm. a terrorist that goes and exploded a vehicle the particular the Particles of that vehicle, the carcass of that vehicle, can be gathered, okay. documented, sent for forensic analysis, and the history of that vehicle will be found. So this is a strong forensic area. How strong we have uh, moved in, in that direction is what I'll be finding out from you after this break, because a break beckons at this point. Thank you. Because I know different tools are applied in the different areas that Interpol works with. Yeah. They will get to find out from you after this break. You. You're watching on the spot, and my guest is the Commissioner of Police, Interpol, uh, Gaiba Omar. We'll be right back after this timeout. If you just tuned in, the program is on the spot and we're taking a look at information security generally from the uh, Interpol point of view as well as all the activities on the sp cyberspace with my guests. Okay, CP, Umar, let's take a look at what you were trying to explain to us before the break and that is even when we have things hush-hush in one direction, seemingly quelled. But then there's a way Interpol and uh, the activities can still dig it up for the safety of everyone to get that information and approve or get security. Yeah. Let's wrap up on that. Okay, yeah, now let me give you another example of the forensic analysis on phones. Hmm. Phones are the electronics are, are now the major instruments in which crime are committed, crimes yes. are committed. Yes. And um, uh, the Interpol has a tool, uh, okay. there are so many of them which we now use to determine even if the phone is destroyed, as long as we will get that phone, we can retrieve all the history of that phone. 
So what if you can lay your hands on the phone? No, like, if you... Like I lost two phones, like three, four years ago, I've tried to find a way of getting the or uh, stole somewhere in Lagos, here and there, but I never got to uh, no, picking up again. That, that is what we call mobile identification number. Yes. Even if you lost. And a number is attached to that. Yes, I, 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 I. Yes. Even if that number is missing, still we can generate interest on that phone okay. by the use of other device and which we have okay. at our disposal. Okay. And um, don't forget the West African coast. We have experienced so many issues of terrorists coming in. Our borders are porous because of the large or the nature of the borders. Now what Interpol is doing yes. is we have extended our mind device at the borders. Mind devices are instruments that we are used to detect crime based on the nature of that crime. Why not asking you where these are planted and how it works? How uh, as <laughs> we may not be able to let you, you know. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Yes. What I'm not saying you should do that yeah. because this uh, this is public information and yeah. security information on a public space. Yeah. How strong are these tools so far since they've been deployed, and in what areas have you been able to okay garner strength from the members of the public to support you? Yeah. Uh, it's, it's very strong and we're working uh, towards that with other law enforcement agencies okay. like the immigration, the customs, those who are at the border and the seaport. We're working with them on this. And then Interpol has trained those officers in the use of these mine devices, you know, as, uh, including the military also. Okay. We're we are working with them on this. And uh, so it has a national spread? Yes, it has. It oh. has. Okay. And uh, don't forget also the... Nigerian government is doing it, is making sure that the, there is a central criminal database which will be domiciled with the Nigerian police and in conjunction with the Interpol. Okay. So you can see the link with the general database of Nigerian criminals that if you commit any offense based on the uh, collation of all the data from various security organizations. Okay, where are your greatest concerns, CP? Because, um, yes, I know you, because it's an uh, international uh, office, taking a look at every activities as it concerns various countries, where is your greatest concern in making sure your job is not just a pushed aside. I know it can be because of the, the, strong, uh, the strong bond that is holding on to in the various countries. Where are greatest concern when it con con comes to Nigeria and getting information security tidied up? Two things. Law enforcement agencies, the LEs, is up now that um, they come to know that there are tools at their disposal to, de to make their work easier. You can't allow somebody to suffer at the de detriment of your inability to act. And that is why we're appealing to all law enforcement agencies. Don't feel shy. The Interpol is there for you at any point of time. And also members of the public. Many are unaware that if your vehicle is stolen mm. or your traveling documents are stolen and you made a report, ensure that this information reaches mm, mm. Interpol because mm. that is the only way if your vehicle is stolen and is not documented with the okay. Interpol, mm. there is no way in which that vehicle can be recovered. Mm. Even if you cited the vehicle in other countries, mm. it has to be under, it must be uploaded into the data. Okay. Earlier on, uh, CP, we were using the example of the young man who was nabbed in United Arab Emirates, uh, Shopee, you used you use, use that example. Now, on the social media, we see an avalanche of information, unsolicited information. People just put out there because they just want people to know them, or perhaps they decide forming some kind of influence on the younger population, or some even older generation who still feel, okay, yes, I must hit it big time. Now, taking responsibility about the kind of information you put out there. Is key, and 
I need you to take a look in that direction and tell us what we need to do to safeguard our information and also not to attract undue uh, uh, attention on ourselves when it comes to issue of crime and uh, criminalities on the cyberspace. I think um, uh, uh, the, the issue is with the enforcement of the law. Okay. Because every law is provided on the way and manner you share interest on the social network. And um, I, we are of the opinion that um, uh, such laws should really be enforced by the law enforcement agencies. Networking, monitoring all this kind of information that comes out from that. And uh, don't forget, I don't want to let the cat out of the bag, but I can just give you a pinch of it that we are planning something big that will go after all these cyber criminals in Nigeria. It's a source of concern to the government. It's a source of concern to the Inspector General of Police. And he has given us the marching order to go. And we have the means, the resources, and the tools to bring them to we go. We do? We do. On a large scale? On a large scale. Or it's just because of this one we witnessed or over time? Just the one we witnessed. I want to, I want to give it to you. Okay. Yes. Because what happened is an eye-opener for every country. Is, is it just until we had agents like FBI coming in that we, we have to now No, up? not at all. We have been doing that for quite a long time. There are a series of extradition. You are, some of us are not, you know, we, we, the Interpol does its work and it's late for the local law enforcement agencies to sell it to the public what we are doing. Mm -hmm. But however, I just want to let you know that you, you see, you never asked me, let me give you an example, issue of kidnapping, hmm. child molestation, rape. We have a serious database in which once a rape is reported, an individual is biometrically taken. Hmm. All over the world, he is leveled as that. So you can see the connection. We just extradited an Australian who has been in Nigeria for more than 20 years. He committed a crime, child molestation, mm -hmm. and he has been living here. And we work on him, got him arrested, and got him extradited back to Australia to face his prison term. There is another one, a Nigerian that committed an offense in Ghana, the same thing. Mm -hmm. he, 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 so there are so many of that that are going on. And I assure you, by the time that Interpol now is coming into life, people so will you begin say to you have more cases spiked this period of lockdown than you have it before? Uh, of course, because criminals are at it. They capitalize on the quietness of the society to commit mm. such crimes. Okay. Right. Commissioner of Police, Interpol, and Head of National Strength Trial Bureau, NCB, has been on the spot. We appreciate you. And I uh, want to thank you, CP Garba Baba Omar, for coming on the spot. Thank you, Blessing. Yes. Yeah. I'm sure there will be more time some other time to actually take a look at uh, all the things that Interpol is uh, doing on the international scene with their local stations around. Thank you very much Thank once you. again. Thank you. Until you, we appreciate your time. We bring you another interesting guest next time on the spot. My name is Blessing Abu. Goodbye.